Hello everyone. Today we want to talk about IP network addressing. We have used addresses before as they relate to the address of a computer or a node in our previous sessions. But today we want to break the IP address down and look at it more closely. In our example, we have an IP address. This IP address is a class C IP address. IP addresses are broken down into different classes. We have class A, class B, class C. Those are the three that we want to concentrate on. The IP address, as we saw when we were putting in the IP addresses for the network card, has a subnet mask. The subnet mask helps you identify the, the network that the IP address belongs to. Each type of network address has what we call a default subnet mask. A, B, and C. The three types of networks that we're going to look at all have different default subnet masks. But let's first look at the structure of the IP address. The subnet mask has 255, which is a decimal number, and the equivalent binary for that is 11111111. Eight ones. So 255 is the same as eight ones. So you have three sets of 255. And then the zero now represents the host part of the network. Just as you have a first name and a last name, the network has two parts. Let's say your name was Trevor Cummins. Cummins then would be equivalent to your network name. Cummins would be your family name. So in the IP address, the 192.168.10 would be the network address. Then the computers would be computer number one. So you might have another computer, which is computer number two, but it has the same network address, 192.168.10. Let's look at this diagram below. You have three computers. All of them, all three here have the same network address. 192.168.10, 192.168.10, 192.168.10. But the fourth computer has a different network address. It has 192.168.5. And you see that we have an X. The reason we have the X by this IP address is that this computer will not be able to communicate with the other computers on the network because the network address is not the same. For computers to communicate with each other on a single local network, you have to have the same network address. Now, if you want to communicate outside of that network address, then you have to use what is called a router to communicate. So if you get an exam question with five nodes on the network and one of the nodes has a different network address from the others, that's the reason why that computer is not able to communicate with the other computers on the network. Your network, your IP address, consists of two parts. One part is called the network address part, which you see me have on the line in red, and the other part is the host part. IP addresses come with subnet mask, and the subnet mask identifies the network that the computer is on. Before we go into the different classes of network addresses, let's do some revision, and some of you might have done this in, already in primary school. But this, so this is just a revision of converting decimal number 
to binary and binary to decimal. Now, there are many different ways that this can be done, but we pick this way because lots of students don't remember the binary conversion that they did in primary school. And I have found that this is the easiest method that people remember. But if you want to do the conversion using another method, you can. In exam, you're not going to be able to use the internet to get a conversion calculator. So you actually need to know how to convert or you can memorize the conversion table. So here we go. Let us say that we have a decimal 120. And we want to convert that decimal to binary. Again, there are different ways to do it, but we're going to do it by dividing the 120 by 2. The remainders are what would make up the binary number. So let's go. 120 is the number that we want to convert. So we're going to say 2 into 120 goes 60 times and 0 remaining. 2 into 60, 30 times and 0. 2 into 30, 15 times and 0 remaining. 2 into 15, 7 times and 1 remaining. 2 into 7, 3 times and 1 remainder. 2 into 3, once and 1 the remainder. 2 into 1, 0 and 1 the remainder. So for our answer, we want to look at the remainder column. And the remainder column is 1, and you start from the bottom, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So the answer then is 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So that's how we convert the decimal number into the binary number. Now let's check to see if we are right. And we want to do that by seeing if we can convert this binary back to decimal. So what we do is you can lay out the binary numbers here. And under the binary numbers, you want to double the digits. So you start here on the right hand side with one. You double one, you get two, double two, four, you double four, you get eight, you double eight, you get 16, you double 32, and you get 64. So for each binary number, you double the number as you go across to the left. What you do then is add the values of the ones. And the values of the ones would be 64 plus 32 plus 16 plus 8, which will give you 120. So you know that you were right. Again, it helps you to be able to convert binary to decimal and decimal to binary when you are doing your calculations for your IP address. So remember, you add the values of the ones to get back the 120 to make sure that you were right. Again, we're converting decimal to binary, and binary numbers are numbers that the computer understand, and they're divided up into ones and zeros, and you call them bits. Let us look at a next conversion example. We have the binary 111, and we want to convert that binary number to decimal. And then we want to check the answer by converting the decimal number back to binary. So the binary have, we lay it out 111, and we double as we go across to the left. So we start from 1, we double 1, 
and we get 2, we double 2, and we get 4. All we need to do now is to add the values of the 1. So we have 4 plus 2 plus 1, which would give us 7. So therefore, the binary 111 will result in a decimal number of 7. Now let us convert the 7 back to decimal and see what we get. So we say 2 into 7 was 3 times remainder 1. 2 into 3, 1, remainder 1. 2 into 1, 0, remainder 1. And we get 1, 1, 1. So we were right. The answer is 1, 1, 1, which is what we had before in the first place. So that's just a method of converting binary to decimal and decimal to binary. We now want to look at the different classes of IP addresses. We have the class A address. The class A address has a default subnet mask of 255.0.0.0. This means that the first part of the address, the first octet, is the network part of the address. And the last three octets would be the host part of the address. Then we have the class B network, where the subnet mask is 255.255.0.0. The first two octets of the class B network make up the network address. The last two octets make up the host part of the address. Then we have the class C network, where the first three octets, 255.255.255, make up the network part of the address. And the last octet, which is the zero, will make up the host part of the address. We also have the class D, which is the multicast address. And then we have the class E, which is experimental. But for our class, we're concentrating on class A, class B, and class C. We want to turn our attention to two additional classes, the class D address and the class E address. The class D address is usually used for multicast addresses and the octets range from 224 through 239. The class E addresses are an experimental class of addresses. We also have the default IP address for a default route which is 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0. And then we have what we call the loopback address, which is the address that points back to your own computer address. It is common to see 127.0.01 as the internal loopback address of a device. So if you wanted to ping your own IP address on your own computer, you can use 127.0.0.1 because this is what we call the loopback address, again, which is the internal address of your computer system. This is the end of this section of IP addressing. And in our next, next session, we want to turn our attention to subnetting as it relates to the IP addressing. This is the end of our session. I want to thank you for listening. Let us take a closer look at Class A. Here's an example of a Class A address. 120.10.6.1 with a notation of 8. 8 here 
signifies that there are eight bits in the network part of the address. The first octet value of the class A address can range from 1 through 1 to 6. The default subnet mask for the class A address is 255.0.0.0 and below here we have the binary equivalent to that address. We have two examples of a class A address with the 8 for the notation again, meaning that the first part of the address, which is the network part, contains 8 bits. Each network in a class A network can hold 16 million 777,214. And that's a lot of hosts on a network. So again, remember that the default subnet mask for the class A network is 255.0.0. And the first part, the first octet in the class A address represents the network part of that address. Let's turn our attention to the class B address. The class B address, the first octet, ranges from 128 through 191, and the network part of that address contains 16 bits, and we see here we have a notation of 16. So the slash 16 always means that those are the number of bits in the network part of the address. The subnet mask 255.255.0.0 and the binary equivalent to that 255.255.0.0. Two examples here of a class B address, and we know it's a class B because it says slash 16, meaning that the first Two octets again represent the network part of the address, and the last two octets represent the host part of the address. Each network in a class B network can hold 65,534 hosts, not as many as a class A, but still. A whole lot of hosts. Next, we want to turn our attention to the Class C network. The Class C network has a notation of 24, meaning that there are 24 bits in the network part of this address and 8 bits for the host part. The octet values for the first octet range from 192 through to 223. The default subnet mask for the class C address is 255.255.255.0, and we see here the binary equivalent of that. So you can recognize your class C addresses because the class C address has a notation of 24. Again, the first three octets representing those 24 bits. The class C network can hold up to 254 hosts per network.